So why did you start catching that crane launch? Because I had a great uh, interest in cranes and a uh, tremendous fascination with them and they're, they're gorgeous birds with uh, incredibly intricate uh, behavior and uh, I've always had a, a tremendous passion for birds ever since I was a kid and uh, having the cranes here is something that's fulfilled a dream so to speak to be with birds and study birds and I've studied birds from day one ever since a child to right on through graduate school where I studied birds for my master's degree and uh, the more I watch cranes the more I see how fascinating they are and how the intricacies are in their behavior and so I know that a lot of other people are also crazy about cranes they're craniacs as some people coin the expression and so I've created an organization so to speak it's very loose but it's sort of an ad hoc group of people that uh, have similar interests in cranes in the Homer area and uh, so that's a natural thing to call it something rather than just point at yourself in the mirror call it catch my crane watch and that's what we're doing we're watching cranes and learning more about them all the time and hopefully saving their habitat by doing so What are some of the what are some of the goals that you have for Catch Mac Crane Watch? Obviously, learn more about their behavior and distribution and abundance and interactions with uh, other wildlife, and uh, do what we can to, to save habitat of, cat, of Catch Mac Bay's cranes all over the the area not just here on our own land but uh, up and down east end road diamond ridge wh wherever they are south of anchor point basically the manifestation of uh, interest in cranes is very clear because just a week or so ago we had a uh, lecture on cranes and crane biology and over a hundred people attended at the islands and oceans center the fish and wildlife service visitor center and that really illustrates just how much interest there is because that meeting or that uh, uh, lecture was on very short notice had it been advanced um, on their schedule months ahead or a month or two ahead. I bet there'd been even quite a bit more people attending it. So we have a lot of interest in cranes. We need to learn a lot more about our local cranes and, and apply what we know to the body of knowledge and use that to conserve the cranes because Habitat is disappearing everywhere. What are some of the things that you've found over the years that you've had Kachemak crane watch? What's, what's some of the things that you've noticed that are very, that stand out in your mind? Well, I think one of the most fascinating things about them, of course, is their inner relationships. And uh, to watch them dance and throw work dirt clods and sticks in the air and to uh, watch their behavior is especially the ones that are that are mated and most of them are, are monogamous not all and just watch their group behavior Le learned a lot of things about how they pose when they do the unison call for example uh, you notice how the male looks straight up with his bill when the when he's calling the female sort of cocked at a 45 degree angle things like that become evident just from observation you don't need to read about it if you're a keen observer, you'll notice uh, that's uh, something that is common anytime you have pairs together. But that's just one very prominent piece of behavior that you latch on to, but there's so many other things too. What have you found from all the reports that you've been gathering from people so, who've been observers with Catch My Crane Watch? The re reports uh, that I have seen have largely been focused on uh, the threats to cranes and there are several important uh, factors there and probably number one threat in this area is uh, due to the bald eagle and predation and harassment and bald eagles have been fed here because we have probably a hundredfold increase in the eagle population from back in the 60s and early 70s 
and uh, that's wreaked havoc not only with the cranes but uh, other waterfowl, other birds, sea otter pups, uh, you, you can name it. But, uh, so we've learned a lot more and more just the interaction between cranes and eagles, for example. An eagle comes over, the cranes leave. Uh, certainly, they certainly do here. There's some variation in behavior in other locations, like down along East End Low Road. But uh, Gary Ivey with Oregon State University is working on a PhD. Uh, definitely attributed uh, the attacks and harassment and outright killing of cranes by bald eagles as their biggest threat, besides habitat, of course. Without habitat, you're not going to have cranes or anything else survive. So uh, habitat's number one, and we're losing it in Homer, too, as more and more hay fields are subdivided. And uh, then, like I say, other, other factors are, are important for their survival, too. For example, we have no animal control ordinances outside the city limits of Homer and Kenai and, and Soldatna. So there's a, a real problem with uh, stray dogs wandering around and irresponsible owners not keeping them on their property, and that's another factor. Not nearly as serious as, as the eagles, but uh, certainly I get reports every year from people that uh, mention particularly the colts are killed by stray dogs, sometimes just neighbor's dogs that, that do this. And then another factor that's maybe quite important, but we, we can't ascertain that yet, we have no positive evidence, and that is the hunting season that's coming. Beginning up. on September 1 with the opening of the general waterfowl season, even though cranes are not waterfowl by taxonomic terms, they're still bunched in that way by the Department of Fish and Game, and uh, regrettably, one starting September 1st can shoot uh, two cranes a day and have possession of four, but we have no idea how many are, are being taken in the uh, Kachemak Bay area. Some person up in the Anchor Point area sh indeed shot two cranes right in his own backyard. Uh, that's certainly not fair chase to put it in a mild sense, but the bottom line is there's no justification here in the uh, Homer area for hunting season because the Department of Fish and Game uh, has no harvest data whatsoever that I'm aware of. I've asked them and they don't collect those data here and uh, likewise uh, there's uh, no population data that Fish and Game has. Uh, I've chartered an aircraft myself twice and, and flown the Kachemak Bay area. I am aware of none uh, as far as flights like that by the Department of Fish and Game. And the bottom line is if you have no population data or valid information on numbers and you also have no harvest data, you have no justification for a hunting season. And uh, Gary Ivey again with the International Crane Foundation has uh, stated that categorically that it's uh, very precarious, as he used the word, to even have a hunting season because of long-lived uh, birds like, like sandhill cranes.